The National Farmers Organization presents news coverage of the Young Farmers and Ranchers Leadership Conference at Corning, Iowa, cattle market conditions and collective bargaining, an interview with the NFO president following his testimony at the Senate Agricultural Committee hearing, and a memoriam to Senator Hubert Humphrey. For more on these stories, we now go to NFO News Analyst Phil Allen. The far corner that are not in a chair, would you please move forward and find a chair, please? I'm talking now with Orrin Lee Staley, the president of the National Farmers Organization. How about these meetings every week where young farmers come in and visit the home office? Well, Phil, I think it's impossible to describe in words or in a speech out in the a country just exactly the NFO structure and the great professional ability that we have employed to assist farmers in the last few months. And as a result of that, I believe seeing is believing. And the young farmers, of course, are the ones that's going to determine the destiny of American uh, farmers uh, throughout this nation. And that means that being here to see for themselves the great expertise, the nationwide system, the nationwide structure, the contracts that we have uh, with the major companies and all the major commodities throughout this nation, of course, is having a great impact. And they're getting others to come and it's really mushrooming, uh, and this is the way it should be. Uh, we're not putting on a hard sell. The facts are there for themselves. This is the biggest meeting so far, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is, Phil, and uh, it's going to continue because of the request of young farmers that want to come, and uh, from what we have uh, discovered, they want to know a plan. They want to know the prof if the professionalism is there to back up a plan, and they want to know then what they're supposed to do. Uh, how they become a part of achieving uh, the goals. And uh, farmers are determined, and they should be determined, and they must be determined. It's time for them to quit saying, what will you give me? And it's time for them to say, this is our price. You either don't uh, get our food or you pay the price and sign the contracts to assure stability in agriculture. Thanks very much. That's Orrin Lee Staley, president of the NFO. This is Mike Bartek from Nebraska, and he's talking to the whole meeting now. He's just come up to the platform from the crowd. Well, I took it to mind a little bit, and I thought, well, what will I do just coming to the one car road? Heck, there's more young farmers than that in our county. So I went to the telephone and called four fellas and asked them to meet me in a coffee shop out on the edge of a highway right north of western Nebraska there. And we got in a little session and read the letter to them, saying that they're going to have this meeting here at Corning today and wanting us to bring young farmers in from 22 to 38 years old. The boys agreed to it, so I immediately stepped to the telephone and chartered a bus. The fellows that were there at that meeting with me that day just says they'll run around the country and call a few guys on the telephone. And sure enough, or me, it worked. We got a busload in here today. Now if all these, this busload of people that we brought in today, if them guys all take it to heart, and each one of them get five people, well, next week we'll have to charter five buses. <laughs> I want to introduce you to a young fellow here that just recently, I asked him to come to a hog meeting one night, and lo and behold, he came down there, and he's a relatively new member. How old are you, Merlin? Five months. He's a five-month-old member now, and he's a real good pusher in our county and doing a good job, and... This is all unrehearsed and unplanned for it. I just grabbed him out of the crowd, as you see in there. And well, Merlin, tell him what you think of the NFO and what you're going to do for us. Uh, I think this is, uh, myself, this is the only way to go, because uh, we can't let nobody, the government ain't going to do it for us. And I think this organization is, is the way to go. And all I can do is say that these guys are working real hard to, to get us on the right track. And he wants me to tell you... We have brought you live coverage of one of a series of young rancher and farmer meetings at the home office of NFO at Corning, Iowa. Seeing is believing. Week after week, they're coming to NFO headquarters to see for themselves the professional competence of NFO in continuous collective bargaining on a nationwide scale. Maybe four times, but they finally come and I think they're... They're happy they come.
At one of the young farmer and rancher meetings at the home office of NFO at Corning, Iowa, where every week hundreds of these young people in agriculture come to see for themselves, we talked to Walter Hackney, who heads the Midwest region in NFO slaughter cattle. And here's that conversation on the floor as one of those big conferences at Corning was ending late in the afternoon. Walter, what does it seem to you is one of the things that cattle people ought to know about the NFO program uh, most of all? Well, it's become very obvious to me over the last few weeks here. Uh, I've observed a total lack of knowledge of what our organization actually has to offer the cattlemen shippers to the organization or through the organization. It's obvious they are unaware of the potential we have in the fact of the agreements we've got with the respective plants. We've got a marketing condition in uh, extra money per hundredweight for them that most of them were not and are not aware of. It's very obvious that the professionalism we're instilling into the program now hasn't fulfilled that uh, out in the country. They haven't grasped the full meaning of the fact that we're putting people out there that know what they're doing. They can accurately describe these cattle in here to me so we can properly place them in the plants. And then when we get that knowledge to them, it's a natural then that they ship the cattle through us. And this is what's some frustrating to me is the fact that we haven't in the past gotten this information to them accurately. Uh, it's very obvious that all we have to do is show them our program. We show them our credit department. We show them our plant representation that protects them in the plants. We show them the overage per hundred weight we have on each weight grade and yield. And from that then they become just natural shippers through the organization. Uh, one point that was impressive to me every time I heard it stated from these meetings, not just your cattle department but others, is that a nationwide system has a capability of getting them the kind of pre-groupings and uh, grades and weights and all that that the packing industry is looking for. What about that? Well, that's exactly uh, what you're referring to is the blocking of cattle. And uh, these programs that we have put out in the form of uh, a supervisor in an area, that guy can call me and he can tell me that possibly one shipper's got two kinds of cattle. It's very easy to combine each kind that shipper has with another shipper that has comparable kind in a community. We might even split the delivery. They might go two separate directions. As an example, a feeder could have uh, 50 head of cattle, half of them be 1,100-pound steers, and the other half be 1,000-pound steers. And neither of them can go to one plant, but by separating them, sorting them, Combining them with other shipments of comparable weight and quality, we can get, get and command the high premium then for both weights of the cattle. That's okay. what it amounts to. Very good. I'm talking now with Walter Hackney. Just briefly now, Walter, will you tell me the past experience you've had in the industry? You were a head cattle buyer, weren't you? Yeah, that's correct. I was a, f a head fat cattle buyer for Missouri Beef Packers um, out of Plainview, Texas. Um, then most recently, I was vice president of the K Livestock Corporation out of Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, they own the Omaha Stockyards, the Denver Stockyards, and have an interest in the Oklahoma City Stockyards. And uh, that, in that capacity, I was in charge of their cattle feeding and feeder cattle programs both. And then since then, I have come with the National Farmers Organization. Now, you obviously believe that putting this kind of expertise on the side of farmers will work. I don't think there's any question about it. That was Walter Hackney, head of the Midwest region of the NFO Slaughter Cattle Division. Hackney is one of the new top professionals added to the staff of the National Farmers Organization. He also told me in the interview that volume in NFO fat cattle programs has more than tripled from this past October to mid-December. We're visiting with Orrin Lee Staley, president of the National Farmers Organization, following his testimony at a Kansas City hearing of the Senate Agriculture Committee. Uh, these hearings are being held at a time when farmers are very much in the news with tractor demonstrations and actually they are calling their activities a strike. Orrin Lee, what did you tell the committee? Number one, I pointed out that I believe that there has to be a joint effort between farmers and government. Each has to perform their responsibility. The government has a responsibility for all the people in this nation to at least assure farmers a minimum of protection 
and also credit in catastrophes. But we cannot expect the government to solve the problems in agriculture. That's the farmer's responsibility to do above what is necessary over what the government can do. Uh, I think it's very obvious that the farmer's power lies in their production. So they have 4% of the voting population, but 100% of the food production. And they have to unite that food production and be able to bargain collectively. And since these Senate hearings are focused on the farmer strike movement, uh, what did you say about the NFO's position on the strike? We supported the right of farmers to strike. That we supported the basic concepts of the strike. And that at the convention, the delegates unanimously authorized the board of directors to call a holding action on grain, meat, milk, uh, any and all commodities at the time that they felt the most appropriate. But that we did not want to appear to be moving in on the strike action or to try to take over or to be center stage. That our position was clear, that we supported it, but that legally we had problems because of the antitrust laws. But that also we understood and realized and were for the spontaneous atmosphere that was developing and we didn't want to hinder it because we believe that in the end enough farmers must be ready to strike in order to back up contract negotiations. We believe that farmers have to make a choice. Do they want their prices from the government or do they want them at the marketplace? We believe, as most farmers believe, they should be at the marketplace. That's where they should get their price. That's where companies get their price. That's where labor bargains for their wages. You gave five points and suggestions to Congress. One was to raise support loans on grains and cotton to a more adequate level and authorize nationwide marketing agreements so producers can manage supplies by referendum vote. Two, and this was a startling one, make it possible for farm organizations as such to join together legally in strikes or holding actions. Tighten our meat uh, quota, import quotas was another, and provide emergency credit at reasonable interest rates to bail out farmers until their real prices are attained. We have set up nationwide credit committees by counties to assure farmers that they can get credit, that uh, go, the credit goes beyond their county lines, their county borders. Well, the NFO has always stood for collective bargaining for farmers. Do you think that this idea's time has come? The time for collective bargaining is here, that it's time that farmers united their production and they announced their prices like everybody else announces their prices and say, this is our price. If you don't get it, there will be a strike or a holding action. We don't believe that organizations should hide in a strike. We believe they ought to stand up and be counted. And that proposal to make farm organizations, it's illegal for them to join together in strikes or holding actions and let everybody stand up and be counted whether they were on the farmer's side or not. Yes, and it would sure stop the politicians from being able to say that farmers don't speak with a united voice. That would sure stop that, and I've heard that so much that uh, I, I just don't want to hear it anymore. That was Orrin Lee Staley, president of the NFO, reporting on his testimony before the Senate Agriculture Committee at Kansas City. In memoriam to Hubert Humphrey, all of rural America and the nation's farmers remember him too. We remember the scene at the 1967 NFO convention. The National Farmers Organization, NFO, in behalf of its members, recognizes and pays tribute to Hubert H. Humphrey, Vice President of the United States, for his outstanding contributions and diligent service over the years to agriculture and the American farmers. Presented at the annual convention of the National Farmers Organization, December 7, 1967, at Louisville, Kentucky. Senator Humphrey's record in support of farmers is so long and so voluminous, it would take more than this program to recount it. It extends over 30 years and includes most of the major farm legislation. But strangely enough, he believed farmers should solve their own problems. Here's how he said it when he was vice president in 1967. No other nation can equal us in quantity or quality of our agricultural products. 
and our agricultural power. I want generals and bankers and politicians and statesmen to know this, that it is our agricultural power that gives us the critical margin of national strength that this country possesses today. Hubert Humphrey believed in the principles of farm bargaining power. I think the great achievement of the NFO is it's up to date. It understands that what's going on in the modern world. <laughs> what you've done in your work and discussing, even just in the stage of discussing bargaining power carried on by the NFO, this has been a major contribution to our greater understanding of this subject. Why you've talked so much about it and done so much about it, you haven't only convinced some of the public, you're convincing the government. Ah. <laughs> Vice President Humphrey returned to the theme of self-reliance. Economic justice for farm people is going to depend primarily on what they are able to do for themselves. Perhaps the main reason Hubert Humphrey understood agriculture is that he was close to it all his life. He told us this in an interview in 1975. I think I understand the farm people because I lived with them, grew up with them, my parents were those people, and uh, today we need people that understand the difference between a person out there on that farm that has to fight the weather, short of credit, never knows what's going to happen to his price. He's the only guy in the world that has to come in every day and so say, what will you give me, instead of setting a price on it. When Hubert Humphrey died, it wasn't just because he was lovable that the country mourned him. Senator Humphrey's record of legislation hasn't been rivaled since the days of Norris, La Follette, and Capper. Just to list the main legislative acts he wrote or helped write, the Food for Peace Program, the Commodity Exchange Authority, the Commission on Food Costs and Pricing, the Rural Development Bank, grain inspection reform under federal standards, more than doubling the money for the Farmers Home Administration, and in this latest Congress, to stand for higher price supports in the 1977 Farm Act. It isn't just farmers who will miss Hubert Humphrey, and it isn't just this administration, nor this generation alone. He will be remembered as one of the great legislators of all time, and one of the greatest Americans. Phil Allen for NFO News, and that for today is something to think about. As NFO president Oran Lee Staley points out in his president message in the NFO reporter, if farmers are ever going to be organized in the United States, now is the time. And now is the time for NFO collective bargaining for American agriculture. <laughs>